Section 14.0, Pi Server Applications. I'd like to go through a, a kind of a tour of all the different applications that we really haven't discussed uh, in this class, and, and we really won't discuss any more in this class. And just so you know, all of these things are defined. Uh, you'll find these in the in the Pi Server Applications User Guide. Now, this uh, this user guide. Uh, takes you through all of the different server applications, the ones that you see listed here. And I'm just going to go through and, and kind of describe what each of these does. Just a, a quick little, well, as they, ca as they call it, the little elevator speech for each one of these. What does this, you know, how would you explain this if you were had just a few seconds on an elevator to tell somebody what it does? So let's take a look at these, uh, starting with performance equations subsystem. We actually did work with this today. If you remember performance equations, it executes in real time, can use many different tags in the equation. In fact, the functions that we use within those, uh, within these performance equations, they can be embedded within other functions. So there's no artificial depth of nesting. It's a very robust engine. Uh, it's not particularly good for documenting your work. That's why we have something like ACE, the Advanced Computing Engine. Uh, because, uh, of course, in performance equations you can't make comments, but it does not make it any less robust. Okay, it also uses a pi tag to store the results. So that's our performance equation. We have another utility, or another subsystem, called the pi totalizer subsystem. The totalizer uh, calculates a variety of calculations, totals, averages, min, max, range, etc. Actually, the reason we call it the totalizer is because that's the most popular feature. People like doing totals. Now, this is different than performance equations because, well, for one thing, it's not an open-ended uh, expression syntax. It's simply kind of like choosing one from column A and one from column B, and you end up with a calculation. The other thing is it actually makes use of the snapshot table instead of the archive table uh, for uh, doing these calculations, which makes it slightly more accurate than doing these same things using performance equations. Uh, here's a slide that illustrates what we mean uh, when we say that the totalizer is, uh, is slightly more accurate than the performance equations. Uh, if you look at these events, uh, the events either white or black, represent all of these snapshot values. Now, the black values, they represent uh, simply the archive values, the values that are, end up stored in the archive. So when we do a calculation in performance equations, uh, we're simply taking the area underneath this, uh, these, uh, this trend right here, going from the black values to the next black values. Those are the archive values. Now, when we do this using the totalizer, we're going between the white values, which makes it slightly more realistic or more accurate because we are looking at data that's at higher resolution, slightly higher resolution. We have another subsystem called the Pi SQL subsystem. Uh, what that does is it implements, well, it implements what we would call our ODBC, ODBC and OLEDB driver. It allows the Pi server to be seen as though that Pi server were an ODBC or OLEDB data source. Okay. It does require that you have this ODBC and OLEDB uh, provider client in order to get access to it. That's part of the Pi data access package. Yeah. So it does allow read access for tables and write access for some tables. So for example, if you're a real, oh, let's say you're a Power Builder fanatic or a Microsoft Access fanatic or a uh, Crystal Reports fanatic, and you would like to see Pi data, but you don't want to bother to learn how to use Data Link. No problem. Just make use of the or get the ODBC OLEDB client, and then you can in your own native application, your favorite application, you could do all the select statements you want, and do joins and all that good stuff. So uh, that's an example of the Pi what the Pi SQL subsystem delivers. The Pi batch subsystem is what we use to allow you to define uh, repeated events. We tend to like to call this event uh, oriented instead of batch because batch kind of implies that you're in a certain industry like pharmaceuticals or paper or something like that. In fact, almost everybody has some type of repeated events that they would like to compare one to another. And that's what you can do with the Pi batch subsystem. Let me show you a picture. 
as I said, they're not limited to pure batch processes. Imagine that you take that particular uh, segment and expand it out and then compare them one to another. And you would like to do that over and over again each time you make that same batch. So, you know, when we initially saw that, what we were looking at was a repeated batch over and over again. It would be great if we could overlay on top of that uh, different batches and then from that derive what the best way to run the process is. I mean, a good example would be that's non-batch oriented would be uh, power generation. You know, those folks in power generation, uh, they tend to find that uh, I guess power usage goes up the most around 6 p.m. when people get home from work and turn on air conditioning and turn on their ovens, etc. Well, so they're very good at looking day to day to compare one day to the next to help predict usage. Well, what about looking at Saturday? Saturday is completely different than the days of the week. So is Sunday. It's different from Saturday as well. So wouldn't it be nice to have some mechanism to align all the Saturdays so you can look at power usage on Saturday instead of having to look at it in a time series? So we use this to uh, create these batch records. The records are going to have things like unique IDs and locations and operational IDs and recipes and stuff like that. And... Um, it's just best in that case, uh, or it's best for some repeated events to have that kind of information so you can go and look for that batch and then compare it to other batches. Yeah. So process book is really not the best way to compare product runs. Again, uh, imagine that we would like to compare, you know, this product run right here started at this point in time, ended at this point in time. If we want to compare that to this product run. Okay. The better way to do that would be to overlay them on top of each other. And that's what we can do with the batch or event tracking. Now, the grand finale to the discussion on batch is to look at a batch trend the way it should be overlaid. So instead of having to compare these one to another, uh, stretching across backward through time, we are in fact overlapping them. Okay. We have these batch records organized in the system and using our client application called Batch View, we can make use of, or we can uh, align those, not using absolute time, but as you can see right here, we're using relative time. The relative time, it's relative to the start of the batch. So five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes into the batch, etc. Okay. So this is one of our batch trends. And on this batch trend, you can see, uh, well, there's, there's nice ways of comparing the current batches, the current production run, to what we would call the golden batch. You know, this batch right here may represent the best product we ever made, so we'd like to overlay that on top of the, uh, the current value. And of course, this is something that can span across different units because if you have an alias called temp, and that alias exists in reactor 1, reactor 2, reactor 3, it doesn't matter that we're looking at three different reactors, as long as that alias is the same among the three of them, we can overlay them all on top of each other. Now, it's not pictured here, but you could also produce a spreadsheet report that uh, gathers that same type of information and presents it that same way. And finally, the last of the, um, of the different PI applications, server applications I want to discuss is the PI alarm subsystem. Now, this is used to generate and manage alarms. So it's really designed to supplement, uh, not replace the alarm capabilities uh, from plant control systems. You know, the plant control systems are so rich in alarms, we really don't need to add to that. What we do bring to the table, though, is we can get data from a variety of data sources. Now, just to give you one, one good example of this, uh, we've, we actually know of one customer that is actively going out to the Internet and uh, getting from the local ISO the spot market prices for energy. And what they're doing is as they look at the spot market price, they do a calculation using that data plus their PI data, and they say, is it going to be more profitable for us to sell this energy or to go ahead and make our product? And that's a good example of having data coming in from different data sources, in this case coming out from the web using our our HTML interface. It's a good example of how getting that can bring, you know, richer 
choices, richer alarming types than just traditionally getting that from a control system. So of course we can get a whole variety of types of data. Now we can support all the standard types of alarms, above or below alarm limit, delta change, rate of change, etc. And the other benefit of using the alarm system is we do keep a history of the alarms. We do have a client for this called Pi Alarm View. It lets us visualize the alarms and acknowledge alarms.